welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where just a few short hours ago, the great Fistimafel released a new puzzle. Um, and that is what we're going to try today. Um, it has already, I think it's got four stars out of five on Logic Masters Germany, an absolute plethora of amazing comments, as you'd expect from the great man. Um, yeah, and I, I am very much looking forward to have, having a go at this. Now, I do know that there is also another Fist and Fell puzzle I have not yet attempted on the channel. Uh, and that's because that's not a Sudoku puzzle. It's quite a big logic puzzle called Checkered Romino Number 2. I did number one. I really loved it. Um, but because we tend not to do as many logic puzzles as Sudoku puzzles, <laughs> the difference is odd, but, but you, you know what I mean. Um, uh, we tend to space out the logic puzzles. So I, I do fully intend to have a go at that Checkered Romino at some point. Um, but today it is tea time. That's the name of this. Uh, oh, it's just very appropriate. It's the US Open. US Open starts tomorrow at the LA, is it LA Country Club? I think that's where it's at. Um, and um, yeah, so if you're, if you're a golf fan, you'll be, you'll be tuned into that. And Fistemafel maybe is a golf fan too with tea time. Although I suspect that, that Fistemafel's tea time is caused by the, the multitude of teas and inverted teas that seem to be inhabiting his grid today. Uh, anyway, this is going to be fun. This is what we're going to have a go at in a moment or two. Do I have much news? Not really. Um, I've got a couple of birthdays, so I'll start with those. Um, Tess, which believe it or not is short for Tesseract, which is a very unusual name, and Fluffy both have birthdays today. Um, now, Fluffy didn't reveal Tess's age to us, uh, but Fluffy has turned a secret age today known only to Fluffy's favourite people. So we might be able to guess how old Fluffy is. Um, but Fluffy and Tess, many happy returns. Uh, and also Pablo, who has turned 21 today. That's a very important age, down in Erasmus in Italy. And I know it's your birthday, Pablo, because your girlfriend Lido wrote to us. Um, I think Lido is in Spain um, at the moment. And I know that you can't be together today. Um, so Lido's hoping that this um, this message might make up for it a little bit. Um, I hope it does. And Pablo, I hope you're able to have a brilliant birthday with lots of chocolate cake and that the two of you can be together soon. Um, now, the only other thing to mention, I've been talking about this a bit over the last few days, is our monthly reward, which is the Planet Suite. Let's have a look at that. This is the card for it. It's available right now on Patreon. If you started now, you've still got loads of time left, actually, to, to complete it by the closing date, which is the 20th of, uh, of the month. And we have been enjoying very much the planet, planetary facts that you've been sending in with your solutions. Although today's planetary fact, well, it's not really a planetary fact, but it's so cool I had to share it with you anyway. It's from Luke Bovard. Um, who did a PhD in astrophysics, um, but apparently rather than studying planets, studied neutron stars in that PhD. So Luke's fact is related to a neutron star. And apparently a neutron star is so dense, which by the way, actually let's deal with, do we know what neutron stars are? I'm not totally sure I do. I think it's when I think it's when something collapses, like if the sun collapsed, maybe that would form a neutron star, although the difference between a neutron star and a black hole is slightly opaque to me. Uh, but anyway, apparently a neutron star is so dense and has such a strong gravitational field that it, um, that it basically forms an almost perfect sphere, a sphere that is so perfect that it can have a mountain on it but that mountain would be less than one millimeter high. Now that is a cool fact. So Luke, thank you very much for sharing that with us. That, yeah, I think you win the cool fact, uh, the, two, the cool fact competition today. Now, that's all, that's all I've got for you. So now we're gonna tackle tea time and see what Fistemafel has constructed. Let me get my hands on the keyboard and I will read you the rules. So, which are fairly straightforward actually. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means the digits one to nine in each row, in each column, and in each three by three box, just once each. Cells separated by knights move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So let's put a one in the center of the grid. Now, if this was a chess knight, it could jump around all over the place. 
to all of those cells and therefore none of those cells could, could be a one um, in this puzzle if this was a one so just keep the same digits away from one another from a knight's move perspective uh, the digits in a cage must sum to the small clue in the cage's top left corner so those two squares sum to 13 those three to 13 as well those two to 12 and those three to nine and the digits on a purple Renban line have to form a non-repeating set of consecutive digits. Right, so imagine this square was a 1. Then this set of digits would have to be 1, 2, 3 and 4. Because the digits have to be consecutive and that's the only way they could be. But the order, it, it, it doesn't, there isn't sort of an order to how you have to put them in. You could put them in any order you like. Um, but they just would have to be a non-repeating consecutive set. That's it. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now. Now. <laughs> How do we do this? I mean. There are loads of things going on with these shapes. Let me tell you that for nothing. For example, that cell. And then this will mirror itself to all of the sort of edges of the T's, I suppose, that cell can't go anywhere on on the T next to it, can it? Because because these two cells see each other because of the knight's move constraint. Um, now that's going to be the case for all of those cells. Right, I've got, I've got another one for you. Yes, I do. That 13 cage. Has no digits in common. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have any digits in common. With either of these T's, I think. It's that one. It sees those two by Sudoku. And those two by Knight's Move. And obviously this one sees the whole of the whole of the T in its box and by symmetry that logic will apply to that one as well. Now that strikes me as almost interesting. Let me think about that therefore. So hmm. there are three ways of making 13 in two cells 4, 9, 5, 8 and 6, 7. Right, okay, so I have I have had one thought about that, therefore. I've got the flyers flown in. Go away. If you've been sent by Fistimafel, go really go away. Um to distract me. My what my thought okay, let me come back to my thought before it before it, it, it flies away from my mind. Um Yeah. I've got to put a 9 in row 5 somewhere. That's by the rules of Sudoku, that's true. And that means that one of these T's, it might only be one, I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, it, it, no, it, it is actually only one. One of these T's, and we'll come on to why that is in a moment, but one of these T's is 9876. Now, if that T was there, that breaks the puzzle because this 13 cage is now impossible because it needs to have it needs to have a high digit in it so what does that mean that means that the renban in this row and the renban in this row that has a 9 on it it must be one of these ones i don't i don't really know how to I mean, I could do that, I suppose, as a, an absurd pencil mark. Right, but I'm going to come back to what I was m mulling over. So I was, I was thinking about high, or no, I wasn't. I was thinking about extreme digits uh, in this row, but it's going to be the same for this row. Now, there's got to be a one in this row as well. And that's going to be on a rem band that's a one, two, three, four rem band. Now that absolutely can go here. 
because that's just knocking 4-9 out of this 13 cage. Maybe the point is that it can't go there, though. Let me have a think about that. And the reason that that looks difficult is if this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, surely this 9 cage is getting impinged upon. That digit would have to be a 5 or a 6, because that digit sees the whole of that 9 cage um, and couldn't be a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Sorry, that digit sees the whole of that Remban. I think I said cage. Um, so these two digits would be from 1, 2, and 3. And that would create a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple in the column. And that breaks for the following reason. Right, Brain, come on. Think of the reason. Think of the reason. There's got to be a 4 in one of those. These would be from 1, 2, and 3. Uh, no, okay, I can't see why that breaks. In fact, as I look at it there, it actually looks quite useful for that to be the case. So we could have one, two, three, four here. This would be five, six. These would be two low digits. Um, right, okay, but, uh, but, right, I'm going to come back to this row again. So we've worked out there's a, there's a, a nine, there's a nine in the row somewhere, which is on a nine, eight, seven, six Remban. There's a one in the row somewhere, which is on a one, two, three, four Remban. Well, there's one digit we haven't mentioned and that's five. So there must be another Remban in this row that has five on it. Sorry, I realise it's a pregnant pause there. I'm trying to understand what that means. So there is a five ren ban. But but uh, what the thing I'm struggling with about that is what's the nature of the five ren ban? Let's just put some numbers on this. I mean if this is one, two, three, four, and that is six, seven, eight, nine, then the five in this row has to go in one of these squares. So let's just put it in. Let's put it in the middle square. Now, what, what are we learning about the, the nature of this Renban? Because, oh, yeah, okay. All right, I can see something. Um, yeah, these two digits are interesting. The problem is this could be a five. Oh, so I don't think, I'd, I think we've got to be a bit careful about this because that, that could be the five there. So I, I don't think I can do any Sudoku jiggery pokery with this to do with knight's moves but I I don't think we have to yet what I'm just thinking is what whatever whatever this digit is hasn't yet appeared in this row has it and cannot appear on this ren ban because if this is a three for example it cannot appear there so it has to appear somewhere in the row it's not there so it's going to be on the ren ban with the five but the same is true for that digit that's not appearing there and therefore needs to be on the Remban with the five. So these digits have to be close enough together that they can be on a four cell Remban with the five. Right, so this digit and this digit, we, the problem here is that these T's can all move about. So what we're establishing here is principles. So I'm not at all saying this is a nine eight nine six seven eight nine Remban. I suppose I'm saying that one isn't, but I'm not saying this one is. And this one, two, three, four we've worked out could be in, well, it certainly could have been there. So we're going to have to be flexible about where these T's go. But just in principle, this, this digit cannot be one or two. Because imagine it was a two. That's saying we need to put two on this five Remban, but that Remban would then be two, three, four, five, and that digit could not appear in row five at all, because that is a six, seven, eight, or nine. It can't appear on the five Remban. It can't appear in its own, in, in along those squares, because it's already appeared in that box once already, and it can't appear there. So what we're learning, I think, and the same is true if this is eight or nine, that's going to, well, it couldn't be 9 ever. 
but it could have been 8. We could have made this rem band 5, 6, 7, 8, but then this digit would have become impossible because it couldn't have appeared in row 5. So, actually, actually, we're getting somewhere quite interesting here. Uh... Ah, we're nearly getting somewhere quite interesting. Hang on, let's think about this. So if that's three, this Ren band has to be three, four, five, six. Because it needs to be capable of picking up a high digit from the high T. High T. <laughs> that's another golf reference. Do you use a high T? Well, sometimes, you know, depends how much carry I want. Um, hmm. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if this is three, well, okay. Here's another thought. That's not three and seven, because if it was three and seven, this five rembrandt has has too much weight to carry. You know, it's trying to carry two albatrosses, not just one, um, because. It needs to deal with the three, four, five string, and it needs to do deal with the five, six, seven string, and it can't deal with both those things on only a four cell remban. So, right. So this remban in the middle, the the five remban, it's either three, four, five, six, or four, five, six, seven. It's one of those things. Four, five, six. It's either three, four, five, six. Or four, five, six, seven. Um. So this Ren ban in the middle always has four, five, and six on it. And then it's got one of three or seven on it, depending. Uh, hang on, now, now, now I'm confusing myself again. Do I? <laughs> I mean, I think everything I've said so far is true. I'm just trying to see what the implication of that is in my brain, and my brain is letting me down. If that's four, this is one, two, three. Four has to appear in one of these. Five has to appear in one of these, because it cannot appear here. So this is never five. And then whatever this is, has to appear here. So if that was four and that was six, that would be four, five, six. This would be three or seven. And it would form an overlap with one of these rem bands of one cell. But if either of these is three or seven, this is three, this is one, two, four. That has to be three, five. That can't be seven now, so that has to be six. So that becomes three, five, six. And that has to be four. Because if that's three, five, six, this has to be Yeah, this has to be has to form it has to bridge the gap. Right, uh, am I actually learning anything here? I well, okay, I think I am learning something. Although I, I can't see how to use it. I think we're learning that the overlap digits in these cells are definitely from three, four. Hmm. 
I want to say three, four, six, and seven. But they're from three, four, six, and seven. That's true. But, and they can't include 3 and 7 as a set. So you couldn't include 3 and 7 along here. Right, yeah, okay. So again, it's very difficult to do this because we're, we're having to be so... I'm almost tempted to make another copy of the puzzle. You know, because I, I'm nervous that these T's are in the wrong place. But I think there is... Oh, maybe I'll use the top T's for firm conclusions. Firm conclusions are that the overlapping digits are from 3, 4, 6, and 7. That's forced. And, and, in, this tri and in this triple, there is definitely the digits 4 and 6. Because we can't have 3 and 7 as two of these three digits. Because if we did, the 5... Uh, which, where, whichever one T was the five would have too much weight to bear. So there's definitely four and six on the T's. And there's definitely the same is true, obviously, for the set of T's down here. Now that's that's obviously doing something, but I can't see what it is. I mean, gosh, it would be absolutely massive. Oh, I know what it's doing. Oh, or do I? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, well, I think I know what it's doing. We know that the the Renban in the middle row that has that has the five on it. It's sharing at least one digit with with this because it's sharing this digit. Whatever this digit is needs to appear in this row, uh, and that could be three or four. So we know this Renban contains four and five at this point, and we know it's sharing this digit. Which, whether it's six or seven, plonks six onto this Remban. So this, the, the Remban that has the five on it in the middle row, and in the row two as well, definitely has the digits four, five, and six on it. And therefore, that Remban can also cannot go on the left-hand side of the grid. Because it doesn't matter where the four, five, and six go. We've already looked at this. We know that this 13 cage sees the whole of those Rembans. So if this was the Rem, if either of these was the Remban with the five, the four and the six and the five would all be ruled out of the 13 cage and you couldn't make it work. It wouldn't be four, nine, five, six, five, eight, or six, seven. So actually I have got something now. I've got something firm because we, we worked out that this couldn't be nine, nine, eight, seven, six at the start because that broke the 13 cages. We've now worked out it can't have be the REM band that has the 5 on it, so it must, both of these, have got to be the REM band that has the 1 on them. And that means that this 13 cage is not 4, 9, so it's 5, 8, or 6, 7. And, okay, let's go back. We definitely, whoopsie, we know that the overlapping digit has to be capable of being reached by whichever one of these is the 5t. So... Okay, I think, I think we're on the right lines with this. Um, it's, it's just classic Mr. Fell, isn't it? Could you imagine? coming up with this it's so beautiful the way it sort of fits together and makes you think uh, that this that you could <laughs> it's so ludicrous <laughs> that you can put this sort of pattern of t's in the grid and a, a little cage between them and it creates this pattern 
Oh dear. Um, now. Well, I tell you, there is another thought I've just had as well, which is that the Yeah, that, that that pattern that exists here obviously exists for those squares as well. I don't think it's I don't think it's quite obviously it would be fantastic if we knew what these were. I was mulling over whether or not um if this was if this was the five Renban in in this row the one that has the five in is in one of those and this is the one that has the six in, or has the nine in sorry then because we know that the Renban that has the five on it also has a four and a six on it those squares would have to be from one two and three and that would that would break the nine cage actually it would break it I, I hadn't seen that it would break the nine cage but I, I I could see it was under these digits would would be low, but actually I've now noticed that they'd be too low because if two of these digits are from one, two, and three, which they would have to be, a nine cage is always it always needs two of the digits one, two, and three in it because it's either six one two five one three or four three two. So. Oh, hang on. Oh, uh, no, no, forget that. Right. Oh, we might come back to that. I've got another thought. Um, oh, there's all sorts of things popping off now. Hang on in my brain. Right. I've, I've got a three, four pair here. That's one thing I can see. So I've got a one, two pair here. That wasn't the thing. That wasn't the thing, by the way. I just noticed it as I thought of the thing. Um, no, the thing I was thinking... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just double-checking because I realise I'm corpsing here. I'm not, I'm not corpsing. My brain is going... <laughs> but... but um, my mouth doesn't have the capacity to also speak at that time. Um, right. Right. Okay. So what I want to think about is the composition of these digits. Because I think that's potentially of interest. Now, yeah, one of these is now a three, and three is three is a little bit of a problem, isn't it, for the overlaps? Because three means that in this row, three hasn't appeared, so imagine that's a three. 3 has not appeared in this row. So the place that 3 is going to go in this row is going to be on, on the Renban with the 5. Because 5 isn't able to appear in the middle row except on the Renban that has the 5 because it can't appear on the 9, 8, 7, 6 Renban. So that Renban that's got the 5 on it, say it was this one, would be a 3, 4, 5, 6 Renban. because it needs to have a digit that overlaps with the 6789 Renban. That would have to be 6. And the way that that overlap is achieved is by there being a 6 in, in the tip, if you like. 
uh, yeah I'm finding it's very hard to articulate I can see it so what what I'm what I'm seeing is that in this triple well uh, I'm just trying to think about how to explain it let me just I mean, there might be a simpler way so these digits we worked out the overlapping digits could only be from three four six and seven but in each case they've got to include four and six so that triple has to include four and six because otherwise it would include three and seven and if it includes three and seven the five remban has too much weight to bear so there is a four and a six in this triple and the six in that triple is in one of those two squares uh, let's use a different color yellow now the 6 in this triple, which must exist because it cannot be 3 and 7 in the triple, must be in one of those squares, which means there is an x-wing on 6s in these squares. What do I mean by an x-wing six on 6s? Six well, what I mean is that because there's a 6 in one of those and a 6 in one of those, we can ask the facetious question, how many 6s we're anticipating there being in these two columns of the grid? Now, if you study those two columns, Hopefully you will come up with the answer there are going to be exactly, well, it's going to be exactly one six in this column and exactly one six in this column. So that is two sixes altogether in those two columns. But we've just said that in those two yellow squares, there's one six and in those two yellow squares, there's one six. So these four cells contain two sixes. So there cannot be any more sixes in any of the other, any cells in these two columns that are not yellow. And that means this nine cage has not got six in it, which means it's either one three five or two three four, and it's definitely got a three in it. And that means <sighs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I mean, it means that, but I. I have a feeling it means that I've got to be even more careful. With the T's over here, but I, I can't. My brain isn't telling me exactly how to do that. This also, of course, means there's no six in this 13 cage. Ah, here's another thought. Because only one of these can be a four. Whichever one of these, let's say that's three, then those would have to be a four six pair. So there is definitely a four in, in either the, one of those squares or one of those squares. And that means in one of these columns, not only can you not put six into the cage at the bottom, you can't put four into the cage at the bottom either. And if that was in the nine cage, then the nine cage would have to be one three five. Uh, this this is in some way crucial. This must be crucial. I'm sure this is. I'm sure that this is what we're meant to think about. The thirteen cage and three cells not having a six in it. I just uh, I'm not I'm not au fait enough with three cell thirteen cages and what they have to include or not include. So the fact there's no six in it actually doesn't feel very restricted at all. I can see it could have a nine in it. It was one, three, nine. It could have an eight in it in two ways. Eight, one, four, eight, two, three. It could have a seven in it in two ways. There's no six in it. It's got to, it's got to have a high digit in it. It's got to have a seven, eight or a nine because now it can't have a six in it. If it was three, four, five, it would only add up to 12. Not sure. Um, I think it's this one somehow. I think there's I, I think there's an implication that I need to take away from there being a three in the nine cage. I mean, obviously, it's getting rid of a three from this square. I mean, that is true. I, I mean, I can make that deduction. Um, I 
啊。It's, it's, it's, I think there's something about eights and nines in this column. If, if you put an eight or a nine in blue, then you can't put... If you put eight or nine in these, neither of these Ren bands could contain eight or nine, and therefore they would have to be from the the, the four, five, six Ren band. Both would have to be. This would have to be an eight nine pair. Yeah, that breaks. Does that break? I think it does break. I think it's. I think it breaks because because of the effect. Believe it or not, it has back over here. I think. Mm, not sure about this, but I think we might be able to prove. We might be able to prove that both of these T's on the right hand side have to be six, seven, eight, nine. Let me try and do that. Okay, so let's start by saying, okay, well, let's imagine that these are not both six, seven, eight, nine. If they're not both six, seven, eight, nine, then one of them contains a five um, because the only t's we've got left to play with are the ones with nine on and the ones with five on so one of these would contain a five the one that has five on it we know is made up of the digits three four five six and seven so it doesn't have eight or nine on it oh no no that still works that's fine that's fine okay so let's imagine that's the world we're in and we'll say this is the five Renban. And we'll say this is made up of three, four, five, sixes and sevens. And this, and we're trying to say, okay. Um, well, now, now we've broken the puzzle. Because this Renban is, is the nine, eight, seven, six Renban. But that means in this column, I have to put an eight or a nine up here. And I can't put eight or nine up here because whether I put eight or nine up here, this blue thing we know sees the whole of that. And that doesn't work because I can't then put a high digit on these. And that would force, so that would force this not to be a six, seven, eight, nine Ren ban. This would have to be, this would also have to be a low Ren ban. But now that requires both of these Ren bands to be the 9876 Ren band, and that's going to make a 6789 quadruple in column 5, which makes this 13 cage impossible. Because it could only be made up of the digits, well, digits from 5, 4, and 3. And that doesn't add up to 13. There is a knowledge bomb. 12 is less than 13. So I think that's right, isn't it? I think because. You either make both of these Ren bands nine eight seven six, or it's broken, because you can't only make one of them nine eight seven six because the one that isn't, well, because there has to be an eight or a nine in one of those squares, and that removes the possibility of just one of them being nine eight seven six, which shifts the nine eight seven six rem bands over here and breaks the thirteen cage. I mean, it's absolutely mesmerising. It's mesmerising logic, but it's also beautiful logic from our perspective because now we've done it. When I say we've done it, I don't mean that at all. But it means that we do now know this. This these rem bands are six seven eight nine. Uh, now, the problem with that is that it doesn't take us very much further forward with my nine cage, which is where I started all this from. I mean, it means those squares are low because of the six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. We know that the overlapping digits, the yellow digits, can't be eights and nines. 
So these are six and sevens now. All right, so one of these is a seven. Right, so we now know that, the, say this was a seven, that couldn't be a three. So there would be a seven, four here, and this would be a six. And then that would be a three, and this would be a four, six pair. So, ah, so this one is a four, six pair. Because there's, there's, there's always got to be a six in one of those squares, and there's always got to be a six in one of those squares, and the same is true of four. So the only way that's achievable now is if these two squares are a four, six pair, which is slightly odd, but very welcome. We know that these are the, we know both of these are the five Ren bands, don't we? So, I don't quite know how to pencil mark this. I mean, it, uh, full pencil marking might be the order of the day. Um, so although these are a four six pair that can fill those in ah hang on can we get rid of yes so these two digits here see the whole of a one two three four t don't they so we can get rid of the threes and the fours so these come down to five six or seven Sorry, I'm just trying to see. <laughs> it feels like that's trying to stop this being a 6-7 pair. Um, oh, I don't know. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, it's much simpler. Ah. <laughs> You've done it. Right. So, we could have done this before, but I didn't notice it. Now I have my yellow digits. We worked out there was an X-wing on sixes in my yellow digits. And I was obsessed with trying to apply that to the 13 and the 9 cage. That was a mistake, it turns out. Because what I should have done is just say, well, because there's a 6 there, where is the 6 in this box? And the answer is in one of those three squares. And where is the six in this box? And the answer is in one of those three squares. Now, what would happen if this 13 cage didn't include a six? So let's say that that's five, eight. Well, now the sixes are left in this pattern. And that's impossible because of the knight's move constraint. You cannot, we couldn't have a six in those two squares because these see each other. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful and really simple. I'm sorry, I didn't spot that at all. Um, but therefore, okay, this has to be six, seven. Uh, okay, so that means these squares are five, eight, nine, I suppose, in column two. Um, sorry, and now I'm stuck. I don't quite know. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Um, right. Okay, but we can apply the logic we did with those two squares to these two squares, can't we? Because these two squares see the whole of the T's on their right, which are high T's, and therefore they can't have 6 and 7 on it. So these are quite low. These digits can't include 6, because 6 is definitely on both of these T's in the middle. These digits can't include 4, because 4 is definitely on both of the T's in the middle. Because we know the T's in the middle are definitely 4, 5, 6, and then 1 of 3 and 7, and they're different as well because there's definitely a seven in one strip, one of these strips, and there's definitely a three on the other, which we therefore can't have seven on it. So the way in which the five Renban is taking up the slack is different in each case. Um, Uh, 
Sorry, I've, I'm sure we can do stuff now. I just need to work out how to do it. Um, oh, just come on, Simon. You're nearly there, I think. I really do think we're nearly there. Although, I <laughs> say that and I can't quite see how to do it. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. If you can all see this, oh, these can't include three. Does that matter? I don't think it does. I know there's a three down there, don't I? Um... One of these is three. That's going to have one, two, four. That's going to throw... So that three would throw a four into this square. And that would force this to be a six. So one of these goes three, four, six. And the other is going to go four, six, seven. Hmm. Okay, I don't, I don't quite understand how to deal with that. I'm afraid. I would love to know how are we going to ever know which way. Oh, right, it's going to be have to be done. This, okay, so there's definitely at some point we have to do much more work with these cages because I need to work out. You know, which if this is seven or this is seven, if this is three or this is three, and the only way that seems to happen because there's so much symmetry is going to be using these cages at the bottom. Um, so, what do we know about the cages at the bottom? Or maybe it's these cages. I definitely know these. These two T's in the middle have four, five, and six on them. So, right, so there's definitely a four in one of those. There's definitely a six in one of these. And there's definitely a five in the center because that's the only way we can get a five into row two. Same is true here. That's got to be one of these is the four. One of these is the six. Five is in the center. Um, ah, bar humbug. Don't know how to do it. Okay, so what else can we do then? How can we... We've got to achieve some sort of disambiguation of the world. And I don't know how to do that. There's going to be a way. But I don't know what it is. Why have I got seven in that square? That's just nonsense. Same is true up there. So I have got I've got this four six ah. If I've got a four six pair here. Oh, here's a thought. Right, I do I do know something about these digits, don't I? Because although I don't know which way up these go, one of them is three, four, five, six, and one of the, the one of them is four, five, six, seven, and we know that these squares see all of those digits. So these digits are from they're extreme digits. They're from one, two, eight, and nine. Hmm, which is probably. Is that interesting? <laughs> Might be. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I, d I don't know. I don't know what that's meant to be telling me. I know that I worked out earlier, didn't I, that there had to be a high digit in the 13 cage. 
I said, okay. So there is only... There's only one high digit in the 13 cage. You can't have a 7 and an 8 in it, can you? So if this was if this was an eight nine pair. Oh ah oh I see. Right, hang on. There's some there's there is something going on in this column. Um if that's an eight nine pair, where do I put one and two in this column? They have to both go in the thirteen cage where they'd have to be accompanied with a ten. Well that doesn't work. And presumably it's the same the other way round. If I put if this is a 1-2 pair, I've got to put 8 and 9 down here and it breaks. So there's got to be one of these digits. Is down here. One of the high digits is down here. And one of the low digits is down here. Ah, so that feels like it might matter. So this could be... So if there's a 9 down here, it's 913 for sure, because it can't be 922. And if there's an 8 down here, the 8 might be more difficult. If there's an 8 down here, well, it could be 814. No, it, oh, it's not 814, because the 4's gone. Ah, so it's 823. Ah, ah, well, that's good. There's a 3 down here as well. Right, that's beautiful. So now I've got a 5-7 pair in this column out of absolutely nowhere. Um, right, okay, I can do something with that. Because how many 7s are there on those two Ts combined? The answer is 1. There's only 1... Um, there's only one seven on it on on the middle T, if we could call it that, um, because one of the middle T's needs to have a three on it, and therefore can't have a seven on it. Um, so there's not possible to have a seven in one of those squares. So that must be a five six pair, which is rather beautiful. Uh, let's just tidy that those pencil marks up. And now there must be a three in one of those squares. Yes, okay, so now, yeah, we can just keep counting. Look, now I've definitely got a five on one of these T's, and I've definitely got a second five on one of these T's, so I can't have a third five. So we can take five out of these two squares. Right, so now we've got a three, four pair here. Let's just, let's just see what this is doing for us. Not well, maybe that this twelve cage is not three nine anymore, because this three sees both sides of it, so it's either four eight or five seven. So it looks like it doesn't want to be five seven. Why can't it be five seven? If it's five seven, those two digits have to be the same. Uh, which is hmm, I can't immediately disprove that. I think that does that feels like that cell's trying to break this being a five seven. Um, oh come on, Simon! What's going on? It's got to be. Oh, it is 5-7. No, it is 5-7. I've done it. Right. Okay, look. Um, 4 in this box is in one of those two cells. We know there's a 4. We, there is definitely a 4 on this T. And it's in one of those squares. And those squares see that one. So that can't be a 4. And there's a 3-4 pair there. So that can't be a 4. Which means this is not 4-8. It is 5-7. Those two digits are now the same. Uh, oh, hang on. Let's try a different colour. Those those are the same digit. 
because these two can't be the same because of the knight's move. 5, 7 means this square's not 5. This square's not 5. One of these is a 5, so that one's not a 5 either, is it? If that's a 5, it's knocking 5 out of both of those squares. So we've almost got got rid of 5 from here. If we get rid of 5, this would be 2, 3, 4. And that would give us these digits as 1, 5. 7. This is it. It's something like this. This is what we've got to figure out. Um... Oh, come on. We're very close, I think, to cracking this. Six. Six in this box is restricted to just a domino. Um. Sorry, <laughs> I can't see how to do it. Uh. Those two squares see a 6-7 pair, so they are from 8 and 9. Yeah, see, I wonder, if, I wonder if there's some trick I can do similar to the one I've just done on this column. To narrow all this down a little bit more. 7, okay, 7, ah, oh, that's it. Look, this can't be a 7, because it sees, but a 7 would knock 7 out of both of those squares, and this 12 cage couldn't exist. So that's an 8-9 pair. So this is a 6-7 pair now. Let's tidy all this up. If that's a 6-7 pair. What's that telling us? It's telling us... I don't know what that's telling us, actually. <laughs> I think it's telling us something. I just don't know what. Five. Four. That digit and that digit are the same because this digit needs to appear in this row and it's now only got one place it can go let's let's in fact maybe i can i've still got colors spare i think i will i will color that relationship uh can i do the same with this digit no not quite actually oh that's weird that is weird ah that, why doesn't that work that, that's asymmetrical I don't know but obviously if that's six it goes there if it's seven it goes in the middle which was definitely not the case with this one okay so, so some somehow the symmetry's got broken um i don't really know what to do here i've gone come to a, a bit of an abrupt halt I don't know. <laughs> what is it? Um, could it be... I don't know. I really don't know. Is there a reason that... I've got nothing. I, I, I'm desperate to know. Even if I knew which way this went round, that would be very helpful, wouldn't it? Or if there's a way we could... What is it that's going to disambiguate this? Which one of these is six would do it, wouldn't it? Whichever one of these is six is going to reach in and disambiguate the thirteens. So that's six, that becomes six. And that will force this one to be 5, 7. Um, I definitely know there's a 5 here. I definitely know there's a 5 here. So I suppose I know that the 5 in this column is definitely in the bottom three cells. Let's put that in. And I know it can't be there or it would break that. This, this one's ability to be a 5-7 pair. So 5 is in one of those two cells in box 8. 
and that's useful for the following reason. Come on, brain, come up with a reason. Um, or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've got nothing here. I know those two add up to six. Does that help me? I don't think so. Do I? Oh no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think there's... How do we do this? Whatever that digit is. Seven. Oh, whoa, okay, I've got something. Um, let me I'm just double checking this because it's so ludicrous. Wow, okay, that's not seven, I'm going to tell you, for a most peculiar reason, which is that if I make that seven, where do I put seven in this box now? It can't go here, so it has to go there. And now I can't put a 7 in this column, because that cell sees that one by night's move. That's very odd indeed. Um, oh, no, it's simpler than that. I've just noticed another. There's a simpler way of seeing that. If that's 7, because this is 7, you can't put 7 in there, look, either. You, ca you simply can't make this square a 7. So, ah, yeah, okay, so that's a different way of seeing the same thing. But this is definitely 5, and therefore this is definitely 7. Now, is that going to, it might well crack it, you know, because now all of a sudden I know the order. Yes, yes, it does. Here we go. I know the order of things. The order of things is coming into, into view. Now there's a 7 for sure in one of those cells, and that's quite crucial isn't it because that means that's a six which means that's a four that's a three so this was our three four five six so this one can't have uh, another three on it so this is all done four goes into the repeated digit here we got a one two three triple three goes into the repeated triple digit here so we got a one two four triple and we seem to have a one two pair there i don't know where that's come from but i'm going to take it uh, with gratitude. Now four is in one of two places in box seven. It can't go there because of the knight's move restriction. Now this is now no longer four so I don't think that can be two because I think these need to add up to six because they're the complement of whatever's left out of this cage once we put three in it and the other two digits add up to six. That six is giving us a seven here. That's a six. So six is very much restricted in this box. Oh, I see. So six. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Where does six go in row seven? It's only got one position left, I think, because these sixes rule it out of those squares, and that square rules it out of that one. So it's got to be there, which means uh, which means we get the six in box one by Sudoku. Now, does that do things for us? Oh, this was the wrong way round for for eliminating five from this square, unfortunately. So this still could be one, three, five. Hmm. Uh, don't know. Four is down there. Now that's interesting because I can think we can put four in here now. Again, this is exactly where, where do we look at this? We looked at this up here with sixes, but if I was to make this not a four, I'd have fours in that arrangement, which can't exist in a knight's move puzzle. So the four must not be in that arrangement. That's not four. Um, four is in one of two places in this box and it's the same it's exactly oh, this is lovely it's just beautiful it's exactly the same point again where do we put four up here if we don't put it here we get the deadly pattern again of that so we've got to put it there break the deadly pattern we know these add up to six so we know that these are now one three five uh, that has been difficult to show, but it's now true. And the five must go at the bottom by the knight's move constraint. So we get a one, three pair. 
we get a five here by Sudoku, an eight, nine pair. Let's double click the fives. Can we keep them going? Mm, nearly, actually. Five in this box is in one of two places because, of, because it's ruled out of these two by this five. So five is in one of two places in box six. Can we do better than that? Is it reaching in somehow? Uh, five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, let's look at this box because that five takes care of that cell. So there's a five in one of those, which means this is a five. And that bounces back. That can't be a five now. So this is a five. That place is a five here. A five here. How many fives have we got? I feel like we've got all of them, and we do. Fantastic. Fan dabby dozy. Right, so what do we do with that? Seven is out of that square by Sudoku. So this is a seven. Let's double click seven, see if we can do those. Mm, um, feels like we might be able to do something with sevens. Maybe. Uh, so that's a seven by Sudoku. So there's a seven down here. Which, uh, no, maybe not actually. The seven in this box, I think, is in one of two places. Can't be in those two because of this seven. And I don't think these sevens sort that out. Let's double click the sevens again. Ah, no. That's, no, I was thinking I could get these sevens done, but I don't think I can. Um, okay, well, look, we've got eight and nine now as a pair in box one. That immediately knocks eight and nine out of this square because this square sees both of those squares. So that square is low, very low. It could be one or two, I think. It can't be three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine. That's one or two. That feels like the sort of thing that might, might be useful. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Not, 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 not useful after all. Ah, these are an eight, nine pair as well. Now that surely does something. So I need one, two, and three into these gaps. Now let's put those in and see what we can rule out from, or not, as the case may be. That's just so peculiar, isn't it? Oh, this is not two. Okay, so there's definitely a two in one of those cells, which means that's not a two. That is the world's worst deduction. <laughs> um, I know, oh, I suppose because I've worked out there's a three in there, I know these two squares add up to ten. Because whatever we accompany the three with down here, it's going to be one, nine, or two, eight. And so these are also going to sum to 10. That, okay, all right, I'm going to use that. That's not 2, so that's not 8. Can we do any better than that? I don't think so. 1, 3, 4 over here. 1, 3, 4. This 4, no. Oh, it's tricky, this. Oh, three in this box. That's not tricky. That's huge, actually. That is absolutely huge. Because that means I've got a one-two pair here, but that three, by the, the trick we've seen repeatedly, makes this a one-four pair and forces that to be a three, which forces a three-one pair here. Knocks one and three out of some cells down there. Let's double-click threes. Um... Yeah, okay, I get a one, two pair in the middle box, which means that's not a one, which means that's not a nine. I've now got a one, two pair here. So this is eight or nine by Sudoku. Okay, and where does that digit go in this box? It actually goes there. Those have to be the same because it can't go there by the knight's move. So those two digits are the same. I don't... I don't really, I, I mean, I've got, I'll label them with A. I can see A is in one of those two cells, which actually 
whichever which means a is in one of those two cells i'm trying i'm trying hard i really am oh I, and i've done it well not done it but i a can't be there because a is eight or nine and there's an eight nine pair already in that column so a is there i suspect that's not going to do anything but it was quite a cool little series of deductions yeah okay i'm going to keep going with this a can't be there so a's got to be here wow not d a so this is a which means a is in one of those two i'd love to know which one but don't think i do b b <laughs> B is in one of those two. It's almost interesting, actually. Okay, so let's carry on. Where's three in... Yeah, where's three in this box? That's a simple deduction. We can put that in. Surely I can do more with threes now. Apparently not. That's bonkers, isn't it? Uh, this is not three. Three is in one of these two squares. Uh, this is this square is an eight or a nine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's a million ways to do this now. I know the. Okay, let's let's try B's with our eights and nines then. That's B. B is in one of those two, B is in one of these two, so B is in one of these two, and we know which one, that's B. So that is not three, uh, which means that this is, that means three is at the bottom, which means three is exactly here, which means three is exactly there. That, I mean, that's not that bad, is it? As a, and we've finished the threes as a result of that. That cell is B. Oh, and that, that cell now has to be 8 or 9. Sorry, it can't be 8 or 9 or, it, or the box would break. Oh, oh, no, we don't know. We might even have to make use of the fact that we know these add up to 10 and these add up to 10 and start colouring the 1s and 2s as well. Don't know. Um, do we learn anything? that digit's the same as that digit which must then be that digit mustn't it so that's a one or a two. Oh, maybe i can do something with this one to disambiguate the ones and the twos that cell can't be a one or a two yeah that's that oh look yes here we go i've got a one two pair here knocking ones and twos out of those squares i've got this square knocking ones out of all of those squares so that's a one and if that's a one that's a nine and therefore a has become 8, we know that's a 2, we know that's a 9, so B is 9, A is 8, 8, 9, um, uh, what was, it was A that was 8, wasn't it, therefore, okay, has this done it, <laughs> please, <laughs> please kind puzzle, please kind fist and fell, uh, these squares are 7 and 8, nine yeah we can do those nine and seven go in nine and eight go in eight and nine go in that still doesn't do these somehow don't understand um this one is doing the one and the two there which does the two and the one there which puts one in the corner i've not been on the lookout for threes in corners and in fact we're not going to get one today there is no chance um Right, what are these squares? Two, four, and seven down here. Let's actually put them all in and see what we can get rid of. We can get rid of four from that one. Seven from this one. Ah, Bobbins. <laughs> you naughty puzzle. Come on, you're, you're nearly defeated now, puzzle. You may not realize it, but you are. Um, this is one, this is two. So there's now a 2 down here, which seems to have to live with a 6, because I've also got a 6 pencil mark down here. So these are a 2-6 pair, which shifts 7 over. That's shifting A up there, which does 
eight and the nine. Nine now lives in the corner, I believe. So this square is two or four by Sudoku. These are two, four or six by Sudoku. Now, can we do better than that? Six, yeah, that's reaching down. There we go. So that's six. This has become two or four. This has become seven. So something's got to break up this. Ah, the one here is breaking up the deadly pattern. Four, one, one, two, two, four, four, two. Yes, <laughs> please. Yes. Oh, puzzle doesn't include solution. But 43 people have solved that in 16 hours. <laughs> I love that. It's a brand new puzzle. Um, that's sensational. That is just a sensationally good puzzle. I mean, what, what, what more really do I need to say? The whole idea around these T-shapes and their, the weird patterns and the weird way you could sort of deduce their composition and the 13 cage being, you know, helpful. I could have got that quite early, I think. And then I loved the fact that I could actually work out which was which 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 had to have the high digits on, because this 13 cage has been picked so perfectly that you couldn't have a six, seven, eight, nine triple here. And there's and because these squares are so powerful, you can't have a situation where you sort of have a nine, eight, seven, six remban. And then a a five, you know, um, a remban with a five in the same in the same three columns. Uh, I don't. It's just lost lost in admiration again. Every time he makes a puzzle, you just think, oh, "What's the expression Mark uses?" Mark says that when Fistmapel makes a puzzle, he doesn't just make a puzzle; he makes the puzzle for this rule set. And that's what he does. He's obviously had the idea of making, you know, these T patterns. And then he just makes the perfect pattern or pu puzzle using using this idea. It's just, we're so lucky to live in an age where we get to solve this sort of thing. We really are. So thank you to Fistamafel. Thank you for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.